please welcome Kara Swisher and Katie Stanton. Hey, hey, lady. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to be here with Kara, who is the most feared and revered stop. journalist please in stop that. the world. That one's and- got to end. <laughs> And uh, when makers asked me if I wanted to be interviewed here, I was like, not really. If I could interview anyone in the world, it would be Kara Swisher because right. now is a time for payback. So, All right. <laughs> let's see how that works out. All right. Let's you. see how it works out. Okay. No, so, um, I'm not by the way, it. I'm going to fast forward to the end. Not well, but go ahead. <laughs> So I'm not going to do an intro because you all know who she is, but I want to share a few stories about Kara. Um, one is that, well, actually, you probably do all know this, but Kara is the ultimate and most unusual power broker. So all of Silicon Valley and every cir- circle of power has this boys club. And Silicon Valley has been lucky to have a lot of great women like Aileen Lee with All Rays and Hashtag Angels and F7 who are swapping deals together and Skinner Singh Cassidy who is helping women get on all these boards, which is amazing. But Kara is unique in that she has been the source of truth. So every time there's a woman who needs to be profiled, and not that you are trying to do anyone any favors, and you're not nice to people, Mm -hmm. but you are making sure truth gets out, and you're holding everyone accountable, and maybe even most importantly is that you stand up to the bullies. And a lot of women, especially in Silicon Valley, like can't, you're you're nervous about getting that next deal, that next fundraise, you're trying to be careful, but you stand up. So thank you for standing up. Anytime, it's not that hard. And also share two pieces of advice that Kara has given me over the past 20 or so years since I've known you. Um, and I think about it a lot and I want to share it here. One is stop apologizing. I think when I was early in my career, I kept saying, I'm so sorry to ask you this and blah, blah, blah. I was like, stop apologizing. I was like, okay, I won't. Um, and the second is take your space. So you had asked me to be at, at some event at some point. I was like, I'm too busy. I've got kids. I've got parents. I've got my job. She's like, take your space. I will ask 10 women to do something, and 10 of you will say, no, I'm busy. And I'll ask 10 men to do something, and they will always step up they and will. take that space. So take your space, ladies. Okay. Okay. I'm getting into it. All right. It. Let's go. See okay. You. Let's go. All right. Um, so you have interviewed every tech person that basically matters. Mm-hmm. If you could get an on-the-record interview with your notorious truth serum, mm-hmm. who would you interview next? Well, I'm trying to get different people all the time. I sometimes try to get people you don't know very well. Um, I had some of the earliest interviews with Stacey Abrams, for example, when she was just in the Georgia Senate, which was interesting. And I was super attracted to her, uh, comp- her ability to compromise with the other side. And at the time, it was not, it was unusual. Um, you know, I think, I think I've interviewed pretty much everyone I've wanted. I've, want, I've always wanted to interview Dolly Parton and Taylor Swift together. Um, Amazing. And I don't want any adorableness from either of them. Like, I, I want to talk about business with them because what happens is Taylor Swift talks a lot about um, the art itself or her weird Easter eggs or whatever, but she's so super intelligent. I'd like to talk to her about the business, like the, the money. Same thing with Dolly Parton. You get some, like, Kentucky aphorism, like, I don't know, whatever, you know, that's as sweet as a, uh, you know, a cor- uh, you know, pumpkin pie in, in fall. Like, I don't want to talk to her about that. I want to talk to her about her, her really, um, sh- if you look at her history, she's been incredibly savvy from a business point of view. And I think she covers up with adorableness. And I'd like to see that aspect. So I'd like to talk to them together as songwriters, owners of IP, and, and business, business people more than anything. Because I think um, there's, there's a lot there. But that's who I would like to interview. I've tried. I've tried and tried again. But so far, no. All right. So Dolly and Taylor, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're listening. Not at all. <laughs> I've tried. I'll keep asking. I, eventually, I get them. Eventually. So... So who's probably listening right now is Silicon Valley, who hangs Maybe. on many of your every words, I think. Not really. Not really? I guess. I don't know. They okay. don't think they care anymore. <laughs> I think they've moved to a spot where they could give a fuck about anything, as you could see. Um, you know, I can, I can do damage to them. I suppose that's the only thing they're interested in, if I can possibly do damage. But I think that they have moved to a spot. I mean, you're just seeing it with a lot of... Um, it's mostly... It is all men. It's not, it's not women. There's no women involved in this. I'm um, doing... Um, freelance uh, international relations and, and uh, canoodling with Putin. That's nice to see um, from people who literally failed at basic high school history. So um, I find it really disturbing that they're inserting themselves in, um, I call Elon Musk Madam Secretary, and he didn't like that. <laughs> He's not as hot as Tia Leone, but that's okay. 
I mean, she'd do a better job. It's just ridiculous. They're now inserting themselves in social policy because they're rich and because they know better. And it's ridiculous. Like, it's not that they shouldn't say what they want, but I, like the guy in the bar on the corner has as much intelligence as they do about these things. And so they think because they're good at one thing, they can transfer it to other things and actually impact things because they actually have power. So it's, it's exhausting for me to watch that. They're it also is. never wrong in case you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> it is exhausting. And you brought up Elon, so unfortunately, I guess we have to go there. So it looks like he's going to get away with it. Yeah, and we'll be taking over Twitter, and you yeah. have... Well, it's not get away with it. He's overpaying by a factor of $30 billion, so I think we can all feel good about that. But um, he's overpaying it. I mean, what's really interesting is it's like a profoundly bad deal, and everyone's Terrible like, deal. go Elon. I'm like, I don't know. I can do math. This company is worth $12 billion, maybe, on a good day. Doesn't make any money. It was a shitty stock. Um, it's a terrible business, and... Go, go, dude. And you're sort of like, okay. Like, it's the, it's the covering up of incompetence by other g dudes. And if you saw those texts, it was something else to watch. They were crazy. They Notice were like, hey, hey, dude, a billion, sure, why not? Like, what? Make it two. Make it two. <laughs> like, it was crazy only to be in his presence, which is fine. He's a really interesting and challenging person to deal with. But he's, uh, it's just crazy to me that they can do such shitty deals and be lauded for it by the other dudes on their dude fest or whatever. And did, you <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. and did you notice there are no other women on those text threads? Like, does Elon have any female friends? Like, any female advisors, I, any female executives? No, Gwen Shotwell at SpaceX, I think. She was, I mean, like, in this was, Twitter fiasco, I guess. Yeah, I think, who knows what was revealed? I don't know. But, I mean, it's definitely, like, a bro fest of idiocy. Like, hey, you want two? If I, if I get to meet him, I give you one. Without any due diligence. And it, it, it's, it comes out, what I have been saying for years is, you know, uh, intelligence has its limitations, but stupidity is infinite. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and so when you read them, you're like, everyone's like, Kara, can you believe it? I'm like, I've been telling you this. They make decisions based on no business. They just sort of are with each other, and they're like, hey, dude, what do you think? Dude, yeah, dude, you know, the whole thing. And you look at that, and then, and then he goes and tweets it, it, a, a stone-cold anti-Semite like Kanye West, and we have to stop pretending. This is ridiculous at this point. Um, it's... Um, and I'm sorry, he's, we all go, oh, he's mentally ill. He still doesn't, we don't have to listen to him, and people don't have to keep interviewing him. I won't do an interview with him. I refuse. There's no winning in that interview. He gets to spew anti-Semitic nonsense, misogynistic nonsense, and then he, like, you, you have to say, no. And then, what, you know, there's no plus in that, and he's clearly got mental problems. So, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but come on, he's really... You know, um, but everyone lets him do it. And so, you know, and then Elon tweet, hey, my friend, welcome, welcome back, back to Twitter. Right. And hey, I talked to him. I talked to him and dude and I had a talk. And I'm like, what did you say? Please stop acting like Hitler. Like, what does you say to your friend? Like, <laughs> not cool, dude. Like, I could just see that conversation. It makes me crazy. It makes me cr <laughs> Dude, stop saying you're going to kill Jewish people, okay? Not cool. Like, that's the level of conversation. Instead of saying, you horrible showed, I'm not going to affiliate with you anymore. I'm not bringing you back on Twitter. So, whatever. So, if slash when Elon takes over Twitter, will you still use Twitter? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, have, I love it. I do use it a lot. And I enjoy it for news. I, get, I love the news stuff. I can't stand all the, all the toxic cesspool of it. Um, unusually, I don't get that attacked on Twitter not until now, I guess. Um, but... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't trust them to do a good job at security. I just don't. I just it, what, I didn't trust them before, mm -hmm. and now I'm like nervous with cutting all the people they're cutting. Now it may have they may have too many employees. That may be true. I think you would agree with me. They probably did, um, but I worry about security and things. I'm saying I'm definitely downloading all my data and then waiting and seeing. We'll see. It's just like, you know. I, I'm wearing Jordans, not Yeezys, for right now. For example, I just don't want to use it if they start to get, like crazy, I'm not going to use it as a product, just like anything else. So if we have Elon running Twitter and Zuck yeah. running Facebook and TikTok basically reporting into the Chinese Communist Party, yeah. what is the future of American online democracy and conversations? Well, if you think that's democracy, sure. I think it's just a loud, screamy scream fest. I don't think that's democracy. I think democracy is on the ground. Um, I think what happens is we get in these spaces and we think this is what's actually happening and instead it's people screaming at each other. And I don't think, I think there's a whole group of people who are exhausted in the middle and to the left and right 
uh, who are just like, this is not reality. And so the, it's sort of like that Yeats poem, you know, the, the noisy are, have taken over and everyone else is quiet about what's happening. And so in this particular situation, people with an ability to be screamy, like a, a Marjorie Taylor Greene, another winner, um, <laughs> uh, uh, gets to be more important than they are. And then it translates into actual importance because it, 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 um, it weaponizes and it um, amplifies their hate and therefore there's power. there is power in that. We've, we've had, history has shown us that many, many times. Gotcha. Um, maybe switching subjects a little bit. Who is the most underrated and who is the most overrated CEO in Silicon Valley? Um, I think what they've done at Netflix is really impressive. Um, I think they really changed and they've run into problems, but I do think they've constantly been changing. I think they really, they lapped everyone in Hollywood for years. Um, now they're facing challenges now, but that certainly it shows a level of commitment. The ones I like are adults. This is how I think about it. Like Reed Hastings, I have lots of problems. We've had lots of arguments, but he's an adult and you can have a real conversation with him. Tim Cook is another one. I think, um, look, everyone's like, oh, he's not going to be Steve Jobs. I'm like, well, he made the company 10 times bigger. It's a trillion dollar, multi-trillion dollar company. Um, the growth has been astonishing. And everyone's like, oh, he's not like Jobs. I'm like, no, he's kind of better financially. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to tell And I like st t dealing with Steve Jobs a lot. Um, but, and of course now it's kind of interesting. He's, he, remember he was the bad boy and the worst thing he did was park in a handicap zone. And now the rest of them are just like vomiting over everything. He looks good now in comparison to these guys. And actually was very prescient on privacy and some other issues. Um, you know, there's a range of different people that I think are thoughtful. Brian Chesky, I just did an interview with him. Tons of problems at, at, at Airbnb around housing, etc. but is willing to talk about it and does, is professional and doesn't, like, get hurt, you know, if you don't agree with him. Um, you know, some of the Twitters, I like Dick Costello, even though he, you know, he, that, that company's such a fucked up mess. I don't know can what you to explain, say. Can uh, you explain the sexual tension between you and Dick Costello? Dick Costello and I, yes. There's no sexual tension whatsoever <laughs> between us. <laughs> oh, gross. Um, but um, anyway, uh, any, moving on. Uh, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot of startups. I just did at Code, this is my last Code, and I did um, a bunch of, uh, I'm always heartened by young entrepreneurs. And so we did a, a whole day on climate change tech. Um, I started awesome. with an interview with John Doerr, who was just given all this money and, um, and a bunch of others. But then we had all these entrepreneurs. And there was a woman from Israel who was um, put doing energy on piers, which was really interesting. There was a 60-year-old guy who was doing hydrogen fuel. There was a kid from Japan who was doing um, uh, 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 vertical farming with strawberries, which was cool, this idea of what we do with these buildings. Like, think about bringing urban farming. It's kind of fascinating. With very little water and a, a great way to do it. And by the way, the strawberries are delicious. Um, they're expensive now, but they don't have to be. Um, we had a, um, a, this guy who's replacing, he's amazing, this guy, um, who's replacing all the furnaces. I think it's in Newark, um, but in certain cities with... Um, with um, the electric heat pumps, amazing. So we, I, I, these people I like a lot because they're doing some really fascinating entrepreneurship. Um, and so we, I tended to, I, I'm focusing a lot on those people now because I'm sort of tired of the overbred poodles that I honestly have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> they just, some of them do well. Brian Chesky is the same guy, always was, you know, despite his, he, and he's single ladies, um, he, which he talked about actually during, but he talked about loneliness. He, he was honest about his, I mean, the struggle of being licked up and down all day when you and you ha are a real person. He happens to have a very lovely family, so that's awesome. Um, what about the women in Silicon Valley? Um, you know, we mentioned many. a few of them in terms of you know those that are pursuing really worthy challenges of mm -hmm. climate and health. We have an amazing founder here, Sarah, who yep. um, is doing great things with um, cervical health. Uh -huh. um, any other women that have stood out to you over the years that you've been well, filing? Well, you, know, you and Aileen Lee, I thought, were doing really interesting things around investment, despite your investment in Clubhouse, whatever. Um, uh, this should be on Clubhouse, I used to by call the way. Her, I'm like, why are you hanging out with those assholes? Um, uh, how's that going, by the way? Going great. I love okay, Clubhouse. Good. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think some of the, the better people are the investors, the women investors. There aren't very many um, 
CEOs. There just aren't. You know, Lisa Sue is really impressive. Um, at various times, Meg Whitman has been impressive. Not all the time, um, but she certainly has been one of the more prominent ones. There's just not that many. There's just not that many. You talked about Sukinder. Um, you know, Mary Meeker's done some really interesting stuff, but it's really few in, in tech, at least. It's the numbers are just gotten worse. So it's not like you. They they don't get funded. They don't get funded. They don't get a chance. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, you can't really think of people. I guess Google has, Susan Wojcicki is interesting as, 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 a, as someone. Um, there's a bunch of Google executives who have been very, very prominent over the years. But in general, you know, go through them all, Microsoft, and there aren't, they aren't there. There aren't enough. You know, and I actually, when I was at Twitter, the, when I was covering Twitter, the thing that I wrote was the really great, the greatest lead of my life was, um, I, 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 I was talking about the board, which I think you can get board members from anywhere. You can get lots of diverse board members and really interesting uh, points of view on a board. And they had 10 white men, the same white men. And so the lead was... Three or four Peters? Yes, I said there, on this board of Twitter, there are three Peters and a dick. Um, <laughs> and, and it was really great because I was the editor of the site and then I was the writer and I was like, good job, Kara. Like, nobody to stop me. I was like, nice. No one, no one. My staff was like, what? I'm like, Kara's brilliant. Like, and Dick Koslow, my sexual partner, apparently, um, my sexual crush, and not at all, not even slightly. Um, just a little bit. Oh, my God, I'd break him in half. Um, so uh, uh, he, uh, he called me up, and he goes, first of all, that was really funny, because it was. But then I want to say, you know, I want to say, you know, we have standards. And I said, oh. That's my favorite part, is when they say we have standards. I was like, how come you never use the word standards when it comes to your incompetent board who has driven this company into a wall at least 15 times? It's getting ridiculous. And when it's women of color, uh, w w women and people of color, it's that we have standards. I was like, you have a bunch of idiotic white men wrecking this business, and nobody gets held to account. Same thing what I was talking about with this Twitter thing. Hey, dude, here's a billion. It's a shitty investment, and I hope they lose all their money, and they will. They will lose it, but they don't care. I don't, I don't hope. No, I'm sure they will. I don't even hope. I don't have to hope. Well, I mean, kind of related, you see this pattern over and over again, and we know why it is, but it still boggles your mind that you see these men who fail, mm -hmm. and then they're able to then secure another hundreds of millions of dollars yeah, for Adam a second Newman or a third, or I, and a know, woman gets canceled. That. I don't even mind that. It's fine. Like, if you want to make another bet on someone, that's fine. That's fine. It's just that... Others don't get that opportunity. Exactly. To fuck up. If That's you're a right. woman or a person of color, you and, don't get that second. Part chance. of Silicon Valley is like, okay, you messed up. Like you can look at lots of stuff. Um, you know, General Magic was a disaster as a money pit, but it became the iPhone eventually. All the people affiliated with it. And so, I don't like to. I think I'm writing my memoir of Silicon Valley right now, which is super funny, and I'm never going to be able to go back there. Um, but <laughs> totally worth it. But one of the things you don't want to be. One of the things I had on it was you don't want to be the person at Kitty Hawk. There, what you know, it takes off, and you go, ugh, it only went nine feet. Hmm. Like you don't want to be that person because it flew, right? You want to understand the complexity and difficulty of doing innovative things, but at the same time, you want to give. You know, my favorite amendment is the Fourteenth Amendment, which we should be paying a lot more attention to, by the way, around abortion and everything else, because that's really it's not about privacy; it's about the Fourteenth Amendment, which is equal rights under the law. And I, as a gay person, that's the one I carry it around with me because it's really important to think about what that means. And so maybe it's maybe you know, if you moved it to the next thing, it's equal fuck ups under the law. <laughs> You know, under the investment, but like it, there's not an equality of that. You can't screw up and also succeed equally. If you succeed, like I was just thinking, this new Black Panther is coming out. I'm so excited. Um, but I remember at the time they were all like, "Well, that's an unusual thing." I'm like, "It's a fucking good movie. What is your problem? Why is this unusual?" It's because you don't make these things and you don't know the audience. Which the audience loves a story. Like it's a great, wonderful story. And obviously, uh, uh, Chad, uh, Chadwick Boseman was an astonishing actor. But it, it's always it, everything is always qualified when it comes to anyone but, and that drives me crazy. And so that's what's really um, um, motivated me a lot. And I, I got very angry, I think, and the book actually opens with this, um, which was uh, when, when they all went to Trump Tower after, after the attacks on immigrants. And I actually broke that story, and it was a scoop. I was like, but they did it so secretively. They like skulked up to Trump Tower, and I got in touch with all of them, and I was like, what are you doing? You're not making a statement about immigration. You're not making a statement about Tate speech. He's insulted. Mexicans, he's insulted people of, you know, lots of different people. Can you not say something before you're the most richest and most powerful people in the country? They didn't say a word. And they went up there and had a ha-ha bro session with him. 
And I was, the only person was Chris Saka, who, who was like, this is bullshit. And I talked to all of them, and they're like, we'll, don't worry, Kara, we'll, talk, we'll take care of it. I'm like, no, you won't. You want a tax break. Like, you won't. If you're not willing to speak up as the most powerful people in the world just to suck up to someone to get your tax breaks, you know, go fuck yourself. Like, that's what I, and that's what I said in the tweet. So, anyway. Anyway, it opens with that. So, my whole premise was, oh, it was capitalism after all. Oh, thank you. Stop pretending you're trying to change the world. It's just capitalism, and it's a particularly ugly kind. And I love cap. Trust me, I've run so many businesses. I love capitalism. But I also want them to have some, at least, you know, I just, we had our, we had our pivot conference. I've stopped doing the code conference, and we had it in Florida. And I, we were going to do this amazing thing this year with a whole festival. I really liked some of the public officials there, both Republican and Democrat. I've been dealing with them. And then they passed the don't say gay thing and trying to pretend that it's not exactly what it is, which is terrible. Um, and so we pulled it out, right? I pulled it out of there. I'm like, I'm not giving these people even, you know, five, six million dollars. I'm not, or 10 million, I think that was the budget, but I'm not giving them any of my money. I'm not spending any money here. This is ridiculous. And so the PR person for Governor San DeSantis started writing me, right, tweeting at me because she's such a horrible chode, but she, um, she called me a groomer, like, and I was like, I never called do you a what? a groomer, like, groomer. oh, give me a fucking break, you, you know, and I was like, I, I have four children, I'm not taking parenting tips from you, lady, like, I don't need your, you know, anything on why I'm doing it, I'm just not going to spend the money here, and so they went back and forth with me, and it was crazy, and I finally said, you know what, I'm a capitalist, and I'm taking my money out of your socialist country. I call them socials because it drove them crazy, but like you're trying to you're trying to say what I should do, and I don't want to give you my money, and you're trying to make me stop being communists. And of course, they lost their mind. We're not communists. I was like, you sound like communists. You want the government to overreach. It sounds like government overreach and veering in on co communism. And of course, the whatever. Fuck them. Fuck them. That's what my book should be called. Fuck them. Right. So you're going to move the conference to Colorado. You, uh, you know, I talked to Jared Paulus. Yeah. He's great. Maybe. We we're talking to, um, the, immediately, Governor Newsom, Go Governor Paulus, uh, Governor Hochul got in touch, which we will. They want economic benefits. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. So we have some, an election in a couple yeah. of weeks. Mm -hmm. How are we going to do? Badly. I think I'm doing a podcast right after this with a bunch of Republican pollsters. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't know. You never know, right? You don't know, know what people are going to do, but the polling's not good. Polling's not good, at least in the House. We'll see about the Senate. I just did a great interview with John Fetterman um, and actually got into a set two with another reporter who, he did just fine. I had a stroke. I don't know if people know this, but I had a stroke and had similar auditory processing issues initially. Not now, obviously. Um, and um, <laughs> and he, uh, he was fine. He, he was very, people don't understand the difference between sensory issues and cognitive issues mm -hmm. when people have a stroke just because you're, you're you, I mix up words all the time. And, you know, this one reporter was like, well, af when, the, when, he w when he wasn't using closed captioning, he couldn't have a conversation. I was like, he told you that. When you have a stroke, you can't do auditory. It was so ridiculous. It was insane. But, of course, Dr. Oz, um, is, uh, who's in a, who should be investigated for the stuff he's doing, by, censured by medical authorities. Because, like, can you imagine having a doctor? Like, having had a stroke, I was kind of furious. But he was fine. Co if he wasn't cognitively fine, I would have said so. Um, but he was. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. But that's working. Unfortunately, it's working. Um, unfortunately. And the same thing in, um, I think they'll probably win Arizona. We'll see, but it's getting closer. Peter Thiel just shovels the money in for TV. Um, we'll see about Ohio. It's, it's sort of neck and neck. Um, yeah, way too so the Senate is really, that has to hold. I think the House is kind of done. And then, you know, Kevin McCarthy comes in, that guy. That guy, he's kind of dumb. Like, I don't know if you know that, but in Washington, I'm living in Washington right now, and everyone's like, you know he's dumb. I'm like, really? I, it wasn't obvious to me. Like, obviously he's dumb. But he's actually, apparently, not very smart. What about San Francisco? Your beloved San Francisco. I love San Francisco. There's still a big gap in terms of early voting, and the yeah. city is in distress. Like, mm -hmm. how is the mo this very sophisticated city with a lot of progressives, like, mm -hmm. leading it? Like, how is it such a mess, and how is there still not, like a good activist campaign to heal this wonderful city. Well, it's a wonderful city, but let me just say, if you actually use statistics, there, Jacksonville, Florida has more crime than San Francisco. It's just a question of like, the, the homeless problem is very severe. It's very severe here in Los Angeles, for example. It's, it's, the weather's better. I don't know what to tell you, that's <laughs> why. Um, but there's also issues around, we have to start, stop using it as a cudgel because these poor people are on 
you know, fentanyl, and that came from opiates, which came from the Sacklers with OxyContin. There's, you know, there's a very, I did a great interview with Patrick Radden Keefe, who wrote that book, which was amazing, Empire of Pain. If you want to be furious, I literally was like, let me find a Sackler to beat them. Like, after, I, I was so angry after reading this book, but, and, and the kind of manipulation they did of our government. Um, you know, there, there's a reason why these people are on the streets, and instead of hating it, you have to understand, like, it's really hard, and it's almost an intractable problem. You either have to be a, unusually cruel in saying nobody on the streets, um, or you have to figure out a way to move people to better places. But unfortunately, um, we've, we, we're exhausted. We're exhausted as a, as a country, we're exhausted as a world from pandemic, from the, the social media, which has made us all sort of hate each other and treat each other like non-humans. And so we have to really get back to the basics, which is, okay, here's a problem, how are we going to solve it, and acknowledge that it may not be solved. There's, you know, I walk through all through San Francisco, I love San Francisco, and, you know, most of the city is fine. There's, there's a lot of petty crime. They've got to figure out how to deal with that. And I think some of the elected officials, and especially the progressives, are pretending like, well, if it's not murder, don't worry about it. But that's not the way to live in any place, right? You have to care about every citizen. And so, you know, don't complain about your car being broken into them. And you're like, well, yeah, you can. And so we have to stop being quite so immediately hair trigger. I, I, I don't know quite how you do that because Twitter and the rest makes it hard not to be. And so I would hope, you know, people start to really think hard after this screamy period about the importance of community and, and analog and, and, and calming the fuck down. Like, that's the whole thing. Everyone needs to calm the fuck down. And I think that might do it. I, 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 the last thing I'll say is I, have, I do have four kids, and I, had, I have two very young kids, and I was arguing with one of these right-wing people. I don't know why I do it. I shouldn't I, online. And they're like, uh, you know, you know, liberals don't believe in the future. This is someone who didn't have children, right? Telling me liberals don't. I'm like, I have four children. I believe in the future much more than you do. I, comp I wouldn't have had kids if I don't believe in the future. And so you have to be thinking, like, that's the kind of messaging you have to get through, is if you are here, you have kids, you really want to make it better for them. Um, we can't stop, we can't, like, become so like this, because it's not going to, it's going to lead to bad things. It really is, 100%. Okay. On that note, on that otherwise. note, let's wrap it up. Um, thank you so much. By the way, Kara. the new season of Cobra Kai is great if you want to enjoy yourself. <laughs> Give it up for Kara Swisher. Oh, stay right. Okay, so this is my face after infiltrating the trafficking ring, a massage parlor, trafficking little kids, and a whorehouse in one fucking day. So we're in the safe house. I've been practicing my accent all day. 